The front porch we're forming here is just a little bit technical for a couple of reasons. Number one is that the front face that I'm setting up is much taller than the edge form on a piece of flat work like a garage floor. The pressure that wet concrete puts on tall forms grows dramatically as it gets taller. In fact, I did some back of the napkin math here and I think that overall, end to end, this form could be holding as much as 18,000 pounds of pressure. Now obviously, we don't want to blow out. That would be a disaster. But it would be a disaster for the form to even bow out, just a half an inch. If this thing isn't straight, it's going to be wrong. So the form needs to remain exactly where we set it. And, on top of that, we have to be able to strip these forms off quickly because the face will be exposed aggregate and there will be no time to waste at that moment. So we've got square stakes and kickers and turnbuckles and bolts and anything else I can think of to stiffen and anchor this form in place. Remember, too much is always enough. The second reason that this is technical is because this pour is going to include some stairs monolithic, cast right into the porch, and you'll get a good look at that process in this video. So let's get to it. Now, however tricky wood stairs are to build, concrete stairs are trickier. They've got to be level side to side, quarter inch of slope from back to front, an angled rip at the bottom of the face form. They've got to be strippable. There can be no blowouts. They've got to be strong enough to hold up the finisher because he's going to be resting on these things while he's working. They have to be open enough to get the mud into the forms in the first place. There's lots of stuff going on here setting up these forms. And, by the way, the wedge anchors into this pier are really wonderful insurance for the whole process. These three-sided blockouts that I'm building are going to create a vent well with a ledge at the top to receive a grate. They've got to be strippable. They've got to be pulled out after all when it's poured and hard. So there's only one connection to the foundation, to the block itself. Now I forgot to film actually packing concrete around the bottom of these things the day before I graded, but I'll try to show you what the inside of these guys look like when I strip them out.
Now a patio like this really only needs to be about four inches thick, but in this case, that's easier said than done. Getting the grade up to the correct level, nice and smooth, and compacted is hard with a big turned down edge like this. There's just not room enough to work. The edge keeps raveling away. So the net result of this is there's going to be a lot of extra concrete in this form, primarily because of the shape and the space that we have to work with, and because I'd rather pay for a little extra concrete than spend two full days stacking up dirt and sand perfectly in order to save a couple hundred bucks. Welding these coupler nuts to the wedge anchor on the pier side of this arrangement is super important. When I spin these bolts out of here in order to strip the form, I do not want the nut to come off of the wedge anchor, stay on the bolt, and then tear the whole face of the concrete out when the bolt is drawn out. I want it to stay on the wedge anchor and let the bolt come out slick and clean. By the way, love the Fronius. Now vertical faces like this with all of the 45 degree kickers holding the pressure back have a nasty habit of floating up vertically when the mud really settles in against them. So it's a real good idea to drive some heavy wooden stakes way on down to make sure the whole shebang is tied to Mother Earth. And for a job like that, you just can't beat a 16 pound hammer. Now with rebar, making sure that there is adequate clearance between the bar and the dirt or between the bar and the face of the form is critically important if you want that steel to actually be doing its job. In my opinion, an inch and a half to two inches is pretty much a bare minimum in most cases. white foam that's wrapped around these piers is sill seal. It's the same stuff that we put on top of the stem wall and under the mud sill back when we were starting to frame the floor system on this house. But this time it's isolating the porch from the piers so they can move somewhat independent of each other. There's only three things left before this thing is ready to pour and that's a good thing because the mud's showing up at 7 a.m tomorrow morning. It's showtime on what is certainly the most technical concrete pour that we've done on the channel. Now the three things are soak the subgrade. I had this sprinkler running on here for a couple hours yesterday. I'm going to run it on here a lot of the day today. It's important to soak the subgrade. The other thing is I'm going to take Crisco and I'm going to make sure that I thoroughly grease the reveal strips. It's got to happen. And then the last thing will be that I will carefully mask the side of the house so when we're pumping the concrete in here, we don't get burps, as they're called, and splash the concrete up onto the siding because that's a, that's a problem. So if you've made it this far, you're going to watch the following videos about pouring this porch and the one in the back. We're going to have a good-sized crew. I'm anxious to welcome them to the job tomorrow. They're some of the best men and best friends that I've got, frankly. And boy, do they know how to finish concrete. Now, if you're watching this saying, 
what happened to the view behind you, Wadsworth? I mean, I can't see the hills, I can't see the trees. Well, let me tell you that that behind me is not an early fall fog. That's not moisture, that's smoke. We have catastrophic fires in Oregon the summer of 2020. I think I am safe in asserting that this is the worst fire season in recorded history, at least since the mountain men were here. I read an account once of a mountain man on the west coast who saw the entire coast range ablaze. But in modern times, this is the worst. The air quality is low. The vision, the visibility is ridiculously low. People have been evacuated. There have been 110 homes burned in the community where I grew up, 20 miles east of here. And if this is interesting to you, or if you want some more background on that, we have a podcast on our, um, actually it's on the main channel, and on our other channel, EC2. You can check that out. But we're pouring concrete anyhow. Construction workers are used to smoke, they're used to dust, and they are used to working in adverse conditions. So regardless of whether the wind comes up tonight or not, if this hill right here is not on fire in the morning, we're gonna pour this concrete. If you're interested in the costs associated with all the monkey motion you've watched me do here setting this up, we're gonna have quite a few of them on the page that we have available to our supporters. You can check that, if, that out if you would like. But bottom line is this, I personally, and Nate and I, as a partnership, appreciate you watching our videos. We appreciate you setting aside time to, you know, kind of keep track of what we're doing here. We really appreciate you sharing it with your friends. So thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.